You just witnessed playback of some great music on the Leadworks Wurlitzer Jukebox, marketed Wurlitzer 50s, and I guess the company was originating in Cleveland, Ohio, but uh, this particular product was made in Japan. I don't know what the two have to do with each other, but uh, yeah, offices in Cleveland, Ohio, and Japan. Anyway, this product was sold in the mid to late 1980s, and it was really a toy made for adults. Uh, it was not marketed to kids. And it came with these little tapes, or well, it didn't come with them. You had to spend a bazillion dollars for these extra tapes with extra songs on them. What doesn't make sense is that each one of these tapes have one song on them as opposed to four. I mean, you could potentially have four songs on these little tiny tapes. You have potential for four tracks. So not sure what happened there, but that would have been really cool. In any case, uh, I'm not going to talk about how this product is related to another product that I've made a couple of videos about. It's the uh, the talking notepad, which uses the almost identical tape as this Wurlitzer jukebox. You can see these two tapes are practically a mirror image of one another. And ironically, I can play this music tape in my talking notepad, but I cannot play recordings I've made on my talking notepad on the Wurlitzer jukebox. Kind of a bummer. I even took the tape out of one of these particular cartridges, put it in my awesome Pioneer tape deck, recorded a song on it, and it just simply does not play in this Wurlitzer jukebox. The track configuration is different than a regular cassette. Hmm. Maybe they did that on purpose. I'm also not going to talk about Tiffany because I don't like Tiffany. Oh, wait. No, I'm not going to talk about how this tape, which is actually for the Fisher Price Pocket Rocker, is very, very similar, or at least a distant cousin of the tapes that were played in this little jukebox. They are very close, but there is a slight difference there. Maybe just to prevent any copyright or trademark issues between the two formats. But uh, a cool format nonetheless, and again, you can look it up on my channel, which I made a video of this quite a bit back in the day, and I bought another one recently and decided to, let's, let's just tear into one of these and see what makes it tick on the inside. So that is the purpose of this video. Stay tuned, and at the end, I'm gonna show you a couple other things that I've done. I've modified a 2XL tape player. I'll show you how I did that, and I'll show you the actual talking notepad in HD, just in case my original video wasn't. As you saw in the beginning of this video, the operation of this unit is very, very simple. There are no controls at all, other than the control of putting a coin in the coin slot that you see there on the left side. You can see that goes right there. But without a tape inside, nothing happens. There is a little tiny piece of aluminum foil on the front of each cassette. So once the tape has reached its end, or at least its loop, it will trigger the machine to stop. It will actually turn off the cassette mechanism, which is actually kind of nice because then you don't hear the same song 47 times before you finally come over and hit the stop button. Wait, there is no stop button. Well, you'd have to pull the cassette out. That's stop. So the cassette goes in like this, and there's a little tiny switch on the inside that is activated once the cassette is inserted and then a second switch is activated by putting in the coin on the inside now what's cool is there is actually a speaker behind here there's a speaker behind here and but none of these controls here on the front will actually get you anywhere and of course there's no bubbles going up and down the sides it's just simply some lights and they're real lights they're not leds crazy enough right so let's go ahead and turn it over and open it up 
To get into this thing, we've gone ahead and removed the 4D batteries. Look at these. I got these die hard batteries. They die hard. Actually, Bruce Willis made these. They're really cool. So remove the batteries and then remove six screws from the back. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait till you see what was behind this screw on the inside. It's the strangest thing. So remove the screws and then just lift up on the back end of the unit and the back separates from the inside completely. See, there's nothing attached to the back side, no wires, nothing. Set that aside. So this is that strange thing that I was talking about. It's this right here. It's really just kind of a spacer. It's not connected in any other way. So it's some kind of a support beam, I guess, that holds it together. I don't know, it's kind of strange. Put that aside. The battery compartment also just lifts out of the thing. At least I think it does. Oh, nope, there's like a little hook there attached to one of those little uh, poles there on the audio amplifier. Here's the unit in operation, shown from the back side. I put my diehard batteries back in. Uh, this particular unit operates within a series of flashing lights, and these lights are not colored, but in fact, they put a little colored mask in there in front of each light. So you've got our pink and another pink, and we've got our green going on there, which shines through the front. And this is that switch that you saw earlier, or did we see that earlier? I think we did see that earlier. Man, that thing looks like it's about to fall out of there too. Here's a shot of the flywheel and motor in action. Attached to the top of that flywheel is that fake record that you see spinning through the front window. So uh, obviously records can't possibly spin that fast and there's even no tone arm inside of there playing the record. So who are they trying to fool here, right? And you can see this is just a small series of wires coming off the main circuit board there, which happens to do everything. It's your amplifier, it's your light series switcher, it's your power regulator and everything. It's all right there. I did have to adjust the speed on this unit in the beginning when I first set it up. Directly in the center of your screen is the potentiometer that was used to adjust the speed. So that particular potentiometer controls uh, as part of a circuit the uh, the speed this is a top view of that circuit board you saw earlier on the left there you'll see an ic there's some resistors round capacitors there's some other capacitors there some transistors all kinds of good stuff to make this thing sound fantastic and of course paired with all that great circuitry is that subwoofer that you see hanging there in the middle which really rocks the house whenever I play music on this thing. Here's another great view of that massive subwoofer. Look at that thing. Very, very common in toys and other products of that time period. Over here, we have our tape loading slot. You'll see the tape head there at the top of the screen there on the left, just below that little yellow wire. So there's where all the action takes place. So the other day I was watching this show called Pimp My 2XL. It's kind of a follow up to the Pimp My Ride show that, you know, showed you how to really do cool things with your car. But this is for the Pimp the 2XL. So 2XL was a talking toy robot that happened to play eight track tapes. He could play regular music tapes as well as specially made trivia tapes with uh, one dude's voice on all of them and special effects and sound effects and, you know, like, explosions would come out of the front and stuff you know it was really kind of neat so i always thought it'd be cool if he had green eyes instead of red so i went ahead and replaced both of those leds and then i said okay the next thing what i thought would be cool would be to make a 2xl that actually has stereo sound instead of mono sound so i installed these two jacks on the back two regular rca jacks and i also included the switch to turn the thing on and off and then lastly, on this video, I told you that I would show you the, the little uh, memo machine here, the talking notepad, which we've done many videos on before. I wanted to show you how I recorded my own tape for this particular device and play it for you. It sounds really awful. It has a royalty-free song on it that I recorded. Again, I took the cassette tape out of here and put it into a regular cassette, put it in my Pioneer tape deck, and recorded a song on it again which does not play on the jukebox but it will play magically on here so if i turn that on insert the cassette
Yeah, so remember earlier, I mentioned that you could play these Wurlitzer tapes in this talking notepad. They go in upside down, strangely enough, but it does play them. Yep, you can get all the great hits right here on the talking notepad. You, why would you need the jukebox, right? I mean, this is perfect. It's a shame I can't play the whole song because the copyright police will literally show up at your house. They will, they will show up. They will. I promise you. Got to kind of jiggle the tape a little bit to get it roll in there. It is old. Is my story the truth about a girl that I once knew? This is, uh, let's see, this is a 20 second tape, which I believe I used in my original video. Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for being a part of the Datavis YouTube channel. Thank you for being a part of Vintage Electronics and other electronics that I have found in my uh, adventures of finding old electronic items. And so I hope you enjoyed seeing the restoration of the machine. Wow, that's all you get for 20 seconds. 20 seconds worth. This will conclude this video about the Wurlitzer Leadworks jukebox and other assorted electronic items that play endless loop tapes. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll put some links to the original videos that I made right here on your screen. Be sure and check those out. That was back when I was not a professional YouTube maker. Please subscribe, share with a friend, and I will see you next time.